Hi all, thought I'd do a quick update on um, all things quadcopter. Um, so since my, if you've seen any of my previous videos, um, I did a, a range test with the uh, the DX8. Um, only one in FPV world knows that the DX8s are uh, not great really in choice of radio. If you want to start, you know, flying any distance away from yourself, there, and you know they're an excellent line of sight. Um, transmitter but not great for FPV that's why most people will use Futabas which everything seems to be built for Futabas as it should they're great handsets um, and uh, yeah there's uh, I mean I'm, I'm not doing huge distances in this thing uh, you know but I did want to improve on the results that I got um, from my previous video which wasn't spectacular um, I read a fantastic article which I'll link in the description um, which kind of showed a little, sort of teaches you a little bit more about receiver and satellite placement for in terms of aerials that can help improve things. Um, the sort of main dramatic improvement I had um, was from um, what I did here, which was to place uh, this satellite down uh, sort of away from the body of the electronics. Because these quads, are, this F450 is quite small and compact, um, you know, everything's very close together. You want to try and get it away from the other electronics and other kind of RF noise and, and various things. So this was a, a, a this has shown great improvement um, in the range. Um, uh, as per this, uh, you know, bit of reading you can do, you'll see that um, one of the things they suggest is obviously having the antennas in different orientations. I.e., I've made this one vertical on the receiver. I mean, originally the receiver was next to the the NASA, pointing this way, and you know, as soon as the helicopter's kind of this angle, it, you know, it's all just blocked from the other side. So, you know, now that aerial's in good line of sight as the quad rotates in the vertical orientation, and then down here I've got the horizontal orientation satellite which you know no matter where you spin the quad now in terms of line of sight to the transmitter it's it's pretty good and that's really shown up in in the range tests I've done since I will put a video up um, with a new um, range test so you can see an improvement over the previous video so yeah highly recommend that that was just a, a little piece of uh, a little bit of uh, GFK that uh, I cut down um, so that's a, it's a dead simple mod cheap makes a hell of a difference so really worth doing um, the other thing in terms of uh, camera I mean I I like the way this is at the minute because it's light you know relatively speaking um, I did look into using some gimbals for uh, stabilizing the the GoPro for video um, I mean if you take your time balance the motors balance the props get everything nice and vibeless um, get you get, spend some time flying the quad. Get you know, put, I have the gains on a remote uh, knob so that I can actually, you know, tune it and dial it to the weather conditions. You know that this is a fairly stable uh, quad. So the video results have been good. And one of my other videos, you can see with this uh, camera just kind of hard fixed there. Um, I'm getting good results. Um, but um, if we're to look at this in a little more depth, obviously the best place to have the camera would be directly under the NASA. Um, because that's where it's going to move the least relative to the angle that the quad goes through. Um, so obviously, if it's uh, dead in the centre, you know, to, if this was to to roll a couple of degrees to the right, um, you'd obviously have in the centre you'd have that couple of degrees movement wouldn't wouldn't be very much. But say if the camera was mounted out here, you know, that two degrees would mean for quite a sort of big dip for the actual camera. So you can see that kind of exacerbates the further away from centre you have it. So while that's ideal, um where it's then not ideal is the fact that you then get things like these legs come into shot and the props because these GoPros have such a ridiculously wide field of view, um which is obviously it looks great but it's uh, it's a uh, pain in the you know what for uh for for filming and cinematography and photos and what have you so um the best thing to do i found obviously i had to move this forward now in terms of that center line um in this orientation in this axis it is in the center line so again you know rocking from the center it's not too bad because we, you know, we haven't really talked about this axis as well. Um, you know, there will still be a little bit of movement, you know, down at the bottom, but 
that's negligible. It's been pretty good in terms of roll. Um, where it's worse, obviously, is now I've had to move the camera forward. It's now, you can see, this much further forward from the NASA uh, center point. Um, so, yeah, as it tips forwards and backwards, that now translates to quite big movements. So this was the axis, the, uh, the pitch that I wanted to stabilize. And I did so um, by just kind of making up my own little... Uh, mount idea here um, what I did was I took a that's a DS410 digital servo by a line and it's off of my crashed old T-Rex 250 um, and that's great it's a little digital servo plugged straight into the F2 port I think for that axis, is it F2? Uh, let's have a look, yeah that's the F2 port that goes into um, you can see that plugged in at the end which is your your pitch axis um, and that's worked really well. Um, it was an easy modification to do. I've also used that a little cyclic arm, uh, also from the T-Rex 250, and I've put a little screwed little ball link up into the the top of the uh, the GoPro mount there. Um, and that that's worked great. Um, I've kept it sort of in the centre there. Some 3M tape. Um, that was all pretty straightforward to do and then you go into the NASA settings keep it plugged into the, the the software and you can fine tune the gains to get this where it needs to be um, but now I've got some excellent uh, pitch stabilization which is uh, now kind of dialed out this uh, this movement when it's plugged in so uh, that's made a real great difference to the video. Um, you still have to set up your travel limits as well because obviously this servo can, you know, if it moves right the way to the extreme, it will just start picking up these uh, the props and the, the motors. So you set your limits up so it's, uh, you know, it's going to stop about there and stop about there because, again, if it goes too far around, it's going to start seeing the bottom of the legs because they angle in you know but it's it's you know it just takes a bit of time to do but the results have been great and I will put a video up so that you can uh, you can see those results in action um, but yeah all fairly straightforward and easy to do just uh, put the time in and you should start seeing some good results but um, this was great because I didn't have to worry about you know buying a, a whole gimbal which is more weight you know I like to keep things as light as possible the one I was looking at was the X468 I think which uh, is a GoPro uh, carrying gimbal which has pitch and roll stabilization and has the legs down at the side nice gimbal but you know it's 130 pounds here it's like this is kind of getting me close to the same same kind of results uh, obviously it's lighter it's just the servo um, and that's it really the only other thing you'll need to do is probably modify this uh, hinge a little bit I actually had to do a little bit of sanding to get that where it was loose enough um, for the GoPro to be able to swing in it, but still tight enough so that there isn't too much uh, lateral play here um, because um, obviously you don't want this so loose that it will just start picking up vibration again and then you get that horrible jello effect that you get in, uh, in the videos, which is our enemy. We hate it. So yeah, um, I will get some more stuff up, but um, happy modding and uh, I will speak to you soon.